Welcome back. Today we're talking about Elon's abandonment issue. Imagine being ten years old, living with an impulsive father after your parents' divorce. How would you cope? This was Elon's reality, despite the challenges he found escape in reading and company of his cousins. Today we'll uncover more on how this young boy, armed with curiosity and willpower, thrived against the odds. And at eleven, he even saved up and bought his own computer and learned basic programming in just three days. Ready to discover the early origins of a man who aims to revolutionize our world? Stay tuned. And if you're intrigued, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Start with Chapter Three: Life with Father. He was ten years old, and he moved in with Arrow, who's his father, and. Also, in the same city, he spent quite a bit of time hanging out with his cousin. And here, I want to highlight a story that really showed us his character. Okay, Elon developed a reputation for being the most fearless. When the cousins went to a movie and people were making noise, which is so annoying, he would be the one to go over and tell them to be quiet, even if they were much bigger. It is a big theme for him to never have his decisions guided by fear. Peter recalls, who's one of his cousins, that was definitely present even when he was a child. So, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are an artist, it's something so important that to have your decisions not guided by fear, because fear is a cage. That will diminish your creativity and your results. So keep that in mind. And here is a story about. And here's a story probably is one of Elon's first entrepreneurial ideas, and he pursued that together with his cousins. One Easter, they made chocolate eggs, wrapped them in foil, and sold them door to door. Kimball, who is Elon's brother, came up with an ingenious scheme. Instead of selling them cheaper than the Easter eggs at the store, they made them more expensive. Some people would balk at the price, he says, but we tell them you are actually supporting future capitalists, which is actually turned out to be true. And at the same time, <laughs> yeah, stories like this are just so funny, right? And also another thing to keep in mind that reading remained Musk's psychological retreat. If again, like we talk about at the beginning, right? You're ten years old, and two years ago your parents just、uh, went through a very difficult divorce, and you are staying with a father that is arguably quite abusive. Reading it just become your escape, right? And as I mentioned before in the previous episodes, that there's actually connection with Elon Musk and Eminem that they all have extremely traumatic childhood experiences, and people tend to seek their escape in the world of comic books, right? And、uh, here. Even said, the single-minded passion of the superheroes impressed him. They were, they are always trying to save the world, with their underpants on the outside or these skin-tight iron suits, which is really pretty strange when you think about it. He says, but they are trying to save the world, and I think from this, let me pull back the. My maps here, and I think here we can find some connections from trying to escape and dive in the world of books and comics, and he's constantly seeking for that connection, seeking for that inspiration. Because on the other hand,、um, there weren't that much love and care. From his family life, right? So he's seeking that energy, that connection elsewhere, which is reading. And、um, the biography mentioned a book he read that 
which is the first time I ever got him thinking about going to other planets. And I believe that I have found the book. It is Profiles of the Future. Yeah, like I cannot find PDF version of this, but looking from the cover, it seems pretty uh, fascinating to me. Moving forward, chapter four, The Seeker. And this is during his teen years, right? And if you have been following Elon Musk, then you knew that he talked about existential crisis that he had when he was like 13 or 12. And now is the perfect time that we can get a better and deeper look about what exactly he was going through. He said, where did universe come from? And why does it exist? Physics could teach everything about a universe except why. And that led to what he calls his adolescent existential crisis. I began trying to figure out what the meaning of life and the universe was, he says. And I got real depressed about it. Like maybe a life have no meaning. And he, at the beginning, he read a lot of philosophical books like Nietzsche. And then that's one of the reasons he got pretty depressed. But then he dived into the world of sci-fi books. And yeah, in the biography is super funny because he read all the um, like science fiction section from his high school. And then he asked the school to actually uh, buy more books so they can keep reading. <laughs> it's just fascinating. He read a lot about AI. He read a lot about Isaac Asimov's robot series. And also a, bit, also a book that have huge influence on him is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And there's a book called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, a novel about a lunar panel colony. The book explores what artificial intelligence develop in ways that benefit and protect humanity, or will machines develop intentions of their own and become a threat to humans? Which also the Robot series talk in depth about that. And most importantly, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Some background story is that there's a super computer deep thought reveals that the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. But the question itself is unknown. And this leads to a pursuit to find out what the ultimate question actually is. So in the book, you knew the answer, but you need to reverse engineer to find out what exactly is the answer. What exactly is the question? I'm sorry. And Elon said that I took from the book that we need to extend the scope of consciousness so that we are better able to ask the questions about the answer, which is the universe. Here is quite interesting because you really um, need to use your logic here. You need to like think as a uh, approach to this issue from not only a philosopher but maybe as like a scientist i believe and my reflection here is that the ultimate answer 42 in the story is a placeholder for the universe or existence itself a thing we can describe or measure in various ways but don't fully understand the questions about the answer re refer to our attempts to understand this mysteries mysterious, complex system in which we find ourselves. And this is the moment you could dissect into, are we living in a simulation? Is there any meaning in life? Uh, what is the purpose of my life? What should I do in this life? Uh, is there more than just paying the bills and live and um doing your responsibilities every day and i believe that there is more that you're here for a reason and i don't think nor i want to portray myself as someone who have all the answer that i have it all figured out but i do believe one thing which is you know hopefully through the series i can come across which is maybe you don't find the meaning of your life yet, but that is okay. But at least there's one thing that we could probably agree on, which is maybe life has no meaning till you give it. 
And for Musk, this extension is not just individual but societal, something he aims to achieve through his ventures like SpaceX, Tesla, and Neuralink. And the book appears to have given him a kind of philosophical direction because, come on, as smart as he was, he was only 13, right? Which is to strive for an expanded consciousness that will enable humankind to better formulate the questions needed to understand existence. And don't want to sound too crazy here, but I personally believe that the expansion of consciousness could also achieve through meditation. And I don't mean by like sitting there and be with your thoughts, but real profound meditation, such as Kriya Yoga or being Samadhi. And yeah, drop a comment if you're interested in that. I want to find out more about that. I could make a series about that later. Um, but, you know, in the moment we're focusing on the journey of Elon Musk, especially from a psychological perspective. So next chapter or the next section he also got his first computer when he was 11 years old. He saw it in the mall and he just couldn't stop staring at it. And uh, he asked his dad to buy one, but he wouldn't. So he actually worked and saved up on his own to buy his first computer. It's called Vic20. And there, it came with a com- programming course at 60 hours. So he stayed up pretty much three days and finished a course. And when. And yeah, like it's for me, it's truly incredible, right? You're 11 years old and you just taught yourself how to program. And then he kept getting better. At 13, he sold his first game with 123 lines of code and he won $500 because he sold the game, right? And also the book talk about his video game addiction. (laughs) I'll share some quotes here. It's so interesting. One of his cousins said, if you're playing with Elon, you play pretty much nonstop until finally you have to eat. Yeah, like, actually, I could relate. But, I mean, come on, if you're playing with me or if you have played with me, then you know that, hey, we don't even stop until we have to eat. We only stop until we're, like, on the edge of passing out or we played until we literally passed out. So, yeah, shout out to Alessio here. He knows what I'm talking about. (laughs) Oh, it's a funny story too. And Elon, one day, uh, he figured out how to hack the games inside the mall. So they were able to hardwire the system so that they could play for hours without using any coins. So I think there's also a part of him that he always challenged the status quo, which is, okay, this is the rule, but does it always have to be this way? Is there any more efficient way where there is an in a way sometimes um cutting corners to get through his goal right obviously again he was like 13 at the time so um you know hack the games in the mall i can totally understand but uh let's move forward five escape velocity so Elon now 17, he's feeling stuck because he just lived the past seven years with his dad. And Arrow, who is Elon's father, you know, um, here's a quote from Elon's cousin. You never knew what you're in for, Peter Reeves says. Sometimes Arrow will be like, I just got us some new motorbikes, so let's jump on them. At other times, he will be angry and threatening and... Oh, fuck. Maybe you clean the toilets with a toothbrush. And then Peter paused for a moment and said, when Elon's in a good mood, it's like the coolest, funnest thing in the world. And when he's in a bad mood, he goes really dark and you are just walking on eggshells. This reminds me of, I think, the a philosopher quote. Maybe it's Nietzsche. He said, be so careful the journey when you're slaying the monster that you stare into the eyes of the monster for too long that you became the monster yourself. 
So Elon's dad definitely had some issues and even Elon tried his best or he's trying his best to not to be like his father. But because, I mean, the environment. But then again, the environment you grew up really have so much influence on you, right? And especially keep in mind that he was there literally from 11 to 17, right? So, yeah, because that explains everything. And then he decided to move to Canada. So he got a one-way ticket and he went to the Canadian consulate and filled out a form for not only him, but his brother, his younger sister, and his mom. And after he got approved, <laughs> this part I could relate, he would have left the next morning, but he waited for two weeks because the flight was cheaper. And then he left. So yeah, there's this succession vibes from his dad that I got when I was reading. I have to tell you guys a quote, it's so crazy. Um, here, this is literally what his dad said. You will be back in a few months. You will never be successful. And it sounds like something exactly Logan Roy would said to his kids. Uh, which is just fucking brutal, right? Conclusion. As we've journeyed through the early chapters of Elon Musk's life, it becomes clear that the seeds of the man we know today were sown early on. This is a young boy who at the age of 11 was extremely curious from sci-fi to computer and when his father wouldn't buy him one, did he give up? No, he worked earned and bought his own, taught himself programming and sold a game he called it at the age of 13 for $500 in 1980s. By the way, I just want to say that this kind of determination is truly something I believe that is accessible within all of us. And this spirit as well, that's in a way that people could call it American dream, right? Which is you believe in something so much and you work really hard towards it and you can achieve that. Yes, you could call it American dream, but this is something fundamental, so unique about human being because there's no any other species on the planet that will believe in the idea of tomorrow. If we're working on this today that will have a brighter tomorrow. There are no other species on the planet that will believe in that. So think about that for a second. But beyond this indomitable spirit is a deeper, more nuanced layer of Musk. He believes in the expensive power of human consciousness, even as a young man grappling with existential questions. He understood that the journey toward understanding the universe is as important as the answer we might find. That philosophy, that willingness to continually expand our intellectual and experiential horizons is perhaps Musk's greatest lesson for us all. It reminds us that the quest for understanding, for pushing boundaries, for asking better questions, these are the endeavors that truly make life worth living. And so at the age of 17, armed with this belief and an unceasing curiosity, Elon made the audacious decision to leave home for Canada. It is a pivotal moment, one that will mark the beginning of a new chapter in his life. But what awaits young Elon in Canada? How will university life mold his future? And will his family follow him in this daring venture? These are questions that will pull us forward, compelling us to explore even deeper into the enigma that is Elon Musk. For answers to these questions and to continue this journey, make sure you don't miss the next episode, which will be released on Tuesday. 
I trust you found this episode thought-provoking and are as intrigued by Elon's psychological journey and entrepreneurial journey as I am. So it would be great if you like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss what's coming next. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep searching because life has no meaning till you give it. This is Jazzy.